first thing that I do when I'm playing games with students is to become familiar with the game that I'm going to play because if I'm familiar with it I can help the students more to be more at ease with their playing as well as to get the most out of the game. I also like to choose games that I can use at a variety of ages just adapting them in slightly different ways. For this game, the sentence zone, I set the cards up on alternating sides so that the cards are easy to grab each pile and go through to search for the words that you want. We're going to start with the first level, which is one subject and one verb. And I'm going to show you just what I mean. Dinosaur, slime, snake. Let's have a snake. Drinks in. We can have this. The snake drink in the house. That'd work, huh? So now I have to start my sentence with a capital letter. Mm -hmm. So I grab that, and then I have to end my sentence with punctuation. That's why it's down at the bottom. Now that I've shown you how to make your first sentence, who wants to go first? Me. Well, Nick, why don't we have you go first, and then we'll wind our way around the table, OK? Yeah. A capital letter for the beginning. Okay. A, a, a what? Pizza. Pizza is where's what is B? Is is a helping being oh, verb. Oh yeah. That's all right. That's why we play it so that you learn where what kinds of words these are. I'm gonna put. Um, I like. Okay, well, I is a pronoun. It takes the place of a noun, and so it, that's going to be in there. So search for that. Ike, you get to start now. How do you know where that is? That would be an article right in here. You're going to have a pizza eat a dinosaur? Why don't you have the dinosaur eat the pizza? Okay. Pick any of those things, because you're finding lots of different things. It's your turn now. Here you go, sweetie pie. Eat is a verb. Red one. Here's your capital. Oh. Thanks, Nick. Thanks. Of is a preposition. Yeah. Oh. Another funny Where's word, book? huh? You start searching through those for a book. So search through here. There's lots of words that maybe could read, like maybe a frog could read. Might be silly, but it could do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's gypsy in there, and there's teacher in there. There is a lot. We're going to have everybody read their sentences. OK, let's see, Nick's done, and Ike is done. Everybody's done. I, I, First off, check to see that you have one subject and one verb. That means one blue and one red, probably towards the beginning of your sentence. Good. Nick, do you have one subject and one verb? Yeah. Good. I Christine. like to take pictures of Mary in school. Terrific. Ike, read yours. The purple people eater got the snakes. Ooh. I hope he's not by me. I don't want to have snakes by me. <laughs> a big teacher can read the silly paper. Terrific. One subject and one verb again. On the back of the directions, they have real easy for you to see the points, starting with nouns and verbs and going all the way down to your punctuation and capitalization. OK? Your nouns and verbs are with the most points, and then it goes down from there. The thing that you need to do is to call out what things you use. I use a capital letter, mm -hmm. a helping verb, a article, noun, verb, article, adjective, adjective, um, noun, punctuation. The way the English language is constructed, you usually have your subject at the beginning of the sentence, unless you're doing a question sentence. So that's why the sentence strip is organized with capital letters and your subject words, your nouns and pronouns at the top, and then you finish your sentence with punctuation and your verbs are usually in the middle. So it's organized pretty much the way you would use the word. So you always start at the top and then work your way down. I use it mostly with the, with the younger students just to get them to be able to put a sentence down, because they have difficulty with just writing a sentence. And if you give them an assignment, like a spelling assignment, put your words in sentences, they always panic. Mm -hmm. 
But if they've played the game, it's like, oh, gee, I can do that. I know how to make a sentence. With the older students, I may say, let's make a subject verb sentence, but now you need to have a direct object with it. So that whatever we're working on in our English books, we tie into the game. And the students really pick up and understand what they're doing then. They also pick up that there are more uses for a noun than just the subject. That nouns can be different, take different parts of, of the sentence depending upon where they're at. And I tell them, it's just like, you're not just a boy or just a girl. You're a daughter or a son, and you're a student, and you might be a niece or a nephew. The same way, a noun can be the subject. It can be a direct object. It can be a predicate nominative. It can also be an object of a preposition. When I relate it to them that way, they really understand that those words are going to be the nouns just used in a different way than as the subject. So as the students get older, we get more technical, more involved. It's amazing the way they transfer it over. You start off with your simple sentences, your four level basic simple sentences. Subject, verb, subject, verb, verb, subject, subject, verb, and subject, subject, verb, verb. Once they master that, you do compound sentences, and when they master that, you go on to complex. And it's all in the directions, so that, and there's examples of every type of sentence so that you can just pattern it after the sample. Rick is joining us and he's been studying about direct objects and predicate nominatives and having in his assignments to identify how the noun is being used and sometimes it's hard to tell which usage it is. And so what we do is play the game with that element in it so that he can really see what you're talking about and what the difference between a direct object and a predicate nominative is. The kids really enjoy that, uh, that you can make silly sentences but still learn your parts of speech from it. And with learning how the, the language is constructed, it helps them to become better writers. The dinosaur drinks and my direct object would be what he's drinking, which is going to be a noun. A big, silly purple frog eats girls. The subject is frog. Uh-huh. And the direct object would be girls. Uh-huh. And what's your verb? Verb is eats. OK, so frog eats girls. Yeah. OK. I noticed that you have three adjectives in a row there. Mm-hmm. Well, when you have three adjectives in a row, that means, means that you have a series. And so yeah. you're going to have to punctuate that with commas. Okay, you notice as you play, especially with the older kids and you're getting more into more complicated things, you go over some of the punctuation rules, such as things for series, so that the sentences are punctuated correctly. Yeah, and it also helps you remember to do that in your sentences that you write more. Okay. okay, let's go ahead and do our sentence with the predicate nominative. I notice you've, you've started there and you've used a helping being verb. Yeah. And that's exactly what you need. Floor is dirt. Mm-hmm. See, dirt is restating what the floor is. Let's look at the difference here. We have the river was a swamp, and we have the dinosaur drinks slime. Okay? Mm, yummy. Swamp it's taking the place of the word river, and I'm using a helping being verb. That makes swamp a predicate nominative. Notice the difference in your colors. You have a regular verb for the direct object, and you have a being verb for the predicate okay. nominative. There's a difference in color, and that helps to cue you that with predicate nominative, it's always going to be helping being verb. When the students understand the difference between the direct object using a regular verb and a predicate nominative used as a being verb, then we might get into a predicate adjective, which is instead of a noun that is restating the subject, we use an adjective that describes a subject, such as the river was little. Again, students pick up right off what you're talking about because of the colors. Mm -hmm. And they know that it is a describing word because it's an adjective and it's describing the river. 
One of the real beauties of the Sentence Zone is that it grows as your students grow. It has many applications. At your beginning stages with first graders, you just play it to make a basic subject verb sentence. When that is mastered, you go on to more complicated things. 